Hey everyone, Cycreasin here, and in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to draw the male torso from the front. So let's start with the proportions. So I'm going to just start with this is going to be the top of the head and this is going to be the bottom of the crotch and we're going to divide it into four equal segments. So just go halfway, make a mark, and then between those halfway between those halfway. Now this is actually something you should be able to do quickly. So if this is difficult for you, and I'm serious, I'm not like just saying like, oh, you know, waste your time or something, but really just spend time doing this, you know, find the top and the bottom of a thing halfway, halfway, halfway. You should be able to do that pretty quickly. Um, do 20 of them if you're not comfortable with them, just 20. And then by the time you've done your 20th, you'll probably be decent with it. But anyway, so now we've got our thing divided into four segments. So the first is going to be the head. So let's just get in head shape. There we go. So now the second head is going to be uh, roughly where the nipples are. Third is going to be roughly where the belly button is. And then the fourth is going to be the crotch. Now, there's a couple of other measurements I want to take, and one is the pit of the neck. And how do we find that? Well, if you divide the head in, in two, so you've got equal proportions, you know, one half, one half, this is where the eyes are going to be. You probably already have heard that before. The eyes are halfway down the head. And then divide it in half again and that's where the nose is going to be. So there, that's where the nose is. So then take this measurement from the top of the head to the bottom of the nose and then double it. So take this and double it. And this is where the pit of the neck is going to start. So I know with these measurements, they're going to seem kind of hard at first, if you're not used to measuring things and getting proportions, again, it's like this thing with the divide it into half and then, you know, get fast at it. It's something that you want to do this a few times. So even just the point I've said just now, if that is difficult for you or new to you, if you don't know, for instance, the head, the eyes are halfway down the head. Okay, draw heads, just ovals, basic ovals and find the halfway point and then split it, just that. See, that's all you have to do, but do it a bunch of times until it becomes easy for you. Because if you're getting stuck on little things like this, then it's gonna be hard to remember all these other things. Uh, if it's hard for you to make a measurement and then double that, then you're gonna to wanna to practice that, right? So just do the basics until they're easy and then move on. So anyway, sorry, getting back to the lesson. So here's where the neck is. Again, it's just uh, from the top of the head to the bottom of the nose, double that, and you've got the pit of the neck. Now, where the pit of the neck is also going to be where the collarbones are. So we can just make a line indicating the collarbones. Now, the width is going to be roughly, and this, this can change quite a bit from person to person, but let's just say uh, we're going to make it about three, three heads wide. One, two, three. All right. So that's our width. And now the color collar bones on men sort of go up. They actually, it's not just that they go up. They have this like strange shape where, uh, let's say this is the uh, sternum. They go like this way and then they go backwards. And then they come like that. It's a weird, it's a weird shape. So if you looked down at the collarbones, so this is going to be the head, this is the nose, um, ears, then it would come like this, like that shape is the collarbone shape. So anyway. All right, 
So get the head, collarbones, and again, here we said, here's where the nipples are gonna be. And then we have uh, the belly button here. And now there's another measurement between the belly button and the crotch, divide that in two. And this is gonna be where the uh, iliac crest is, which is the uh, pelvis, right? You have your pelvis, it's got this kind of shape, and she goes up higher and then comes around and anyway. So you can feel this like for women too, because the good thing about drawing a male torso is a lot of the anatomy also applies to women with slight variations, but you can feel this bone right here. So this is an important point because you're going to have okay, these bones and then you have the rib cage, right? So the rib cage is going to fit um, in the man. It's going to be a bit more open than the woman and it's going to fit in this area. So pretty much the these two heads is going to be rib cage and then and it's this shape. It's like it's wider on the bottom. I guess I could simplify it like this. It's narrow on the top. The neck comes out of here. And then you've got this shape. And then if you divide it in two, that's where the uh, the sternum is going to stop and it's going to go outwards. So you get the bones going down and then around, down and around, down and around the ribs. And there's not just this many, so <laughs> there's more than that. <laughs> anyway, okay. So, okay, back to what I was saying, right? So you have the ribs, right? And then you have this bone and the obliques are going to fit within here. And then you get this shape, like a V and not on all men, but on like really fit men, you can see this, this V shape around here. And then you'd have the legs coming down, doing their own thing, whatever. We're not going to worry about that. And now, going back up to the top, I'm going to put where the uh, the ends of the humerus are, which is the uh, the big arm bone. And then you have the rest of the arm. Now the shoulder, I mean the elbow, sorry. It's going to be roughly at the same height as the navel. But anyway, this isn't an arm tutorial, so yeah. But anyway, yeah, it is. And then double that, and that's how long the arm is. So, you know, this distance, same as that distance. So there, those are the major mm, landmarks we need. And then we can add on top of that. All right, maybe I made the uh, ribs a bit wide, a bit too wide, and this part too. Just narrow that. Anyway, so let's just lower the opacity of that. And now I want to start on the pectoralis muscle, or the pecs, or the chest muscle. So first thing is we have the collarbones here, right? So the collarbones come around, as I said, they sort of go up or they go across and then up and then they connect um, to, or there's a connection here where the humerus, uh, which is the arm bone connects to the collarbones and also the scapula from behind. Now, collarbones really important when dealing with the chest um, and the deltoids also connect to the collarbone and the pec muscle. So halfway, halfway from here to here, that's where the pecs are pretty much going to start. And if I zoom in and, and they're going to end pretty much just below the nipple here. So they're going to be occupying this space, but I'm going to zoom into one individual 
pec muscle. And what happens is, let's say this is the collarbone, then the pecs, they go this way and you have your arm bone here and they connect to the arm bone and you have the fibers running in this direction. And then you have the whole middle part, right? And this continues to go that way. And then underneath they start to go up. So you have this pattern where you go this way and then these fibers start to go up. Now this is, and it's all connecting to the same place. This is when the arm is down. If the arm was up, then what would happen is the collarbone goes up. Now because the pecs are connected to the collarbone, so let's say the arm was doing that, pecs are connected, so they still start from the same place and go to the same place, right? That's not going to change. So then you're going to get that, that sort of thing happening. But let's do it with the arm down for now. And so again, halfway and you have these muscle fibers going towards this point at the, uh, at the humerus and then switching. So this is the shape we get. It's, uh, let's use a different color, sort of this shape for the chest muscle when the arms are down. Now, the other thing is at this point, and this point is, you know, maybe from the collarbones down to the nipple, maybe it's halfway is where you get like the crease of where this pec muscle inserts. And maybe I'll deal with that later. But so you have the pec coming halfway. Now, if you divided the collarbone into thirds, so one, two, three, the deltoid sort of occupies the latter half or the latter third of this. So near this end is where the deltoid starts. So because of this, we have the deltoid connecting here at this part of the collarbone and then the pecs connecting here and you get a little gap right here in between the deltoid and, uh, and the pecs. So again, if I look at this one, let's do a third and the deltoids come here, goes around and this is going in this direction now. So everything is pulling downwards and then right here you have that gap and sometimes that's visible it's not going to be visible as a whole of course but it is an indication of the planes changing so often you'll get sort of you'll see it more in shading where you'll get maybe the deltoid shaded like that the pec is shaded like that and then there'll be an absence of shading or maybe a light a darker or lighter tone in that region that's what's going on and you could uh, feel it too if you're if you're a man I guess maybe for women too. I'm not sure on that one, but uh, yeah, just I guess write in the comments and let me know if you're a woman, if you can feel that sort of, um, what would you call it, space uh, between the pectoralis and deltoid connection. Anyway, so let's do the same thing on the other side. So I'm going to go about halfway between these two and find where it connects. And I'm going to, this time I'm going to do it a bit, instead of starting at the top and going down, which is fine, I'm just going to start down and then go across, and then we still can do the same thing. Now, the chest muscle doesn't connect, like, all the muscly parts, there's actually still the sternum in between. So, when you get chest uh, muscles on guys, that are very like the the muscles are really developed it's not often like that where the chest muscles are just doing that i mean you could get like that but often what happens is it's more a case of you have the sternum 
in the middle and then you have the chest muscles going out on either side and then you have this bony part in between so and then as the muscles get more developed you know they get bigger so of course that encroaches on this territory but even for really muscular guys you often still get the sternum uh, where you don't see that is maybe if you're really fat might get filled in but anyway so we have this part pecs coming down connecting here then we have the deltoid now I know I said this isn't an arm tutorial and it's not but I like to think when I think of the chest I include the deltoid and you can see why because you get this sort of shape you could almost think of it as one thing and if the arm moves up then like you raise the collarbone the arms doing that the chest is gonna go up and that wasn't exactly right so the arm is here I'm gonna use an arc track that movement collarbone it's gonna be around here so the arms actually here so what's gonna happen is the chest is gonna move up but the deltoid is also going to follow so you get something like this where the deltoid and the, the pectoralis they have a very uh, friendly relationship they're good buddies and uh, just like to hang out wherever one goes the other one tends to follow so yeah we got the deltoid and the deltoid goes all the way around here connects to the scapula in the back so now we have these two um, and let's just go up now so mentioned this is where the pit of the neck is now you've got two muscles two huge muscles or big muscles anyway in the neck and that's a sternocleidomastoid and they come around like this and they connect to the pit of the neck and also to the clavicle and I'm not going to go into too much detail into them but pretty much that's it so remember these two muscles they're coming around like this and then they connect to the clavicle here and in between here so there's that and then you've got the trapezius now the trapezius is actually a back muscle so if this is the head from behind and this is so this is the back of the skull it's the front chin jaw um, this is gonna be the ear And maybe the other ear might show up a bit on that side. But anyway, the trapezius connects to the back of the neck like so. And then it comes all the way around. And you'd have you have like a, a space here where you have um, the seventh cervical vertebra. And then so you have the spine coming around here. And then comes around like this and the deltoid comes underneath starts from behind starts underneath like that and it goes around as we said but anyway so it's this shape and what's important is to remember that it goes like this like this is really important I want to stress that to you it is not this uh, so how can I make it more clear let's see what I'm trying to say is it is this shape see how we have it sloping goes up comes down it is not this shape okay and actually on the human body you you don't have any concave shapes like you don't have shapes that do this right so let's say there's the arm right and we have like the deltoid triceps and everything now in simplification it's okay to do but when you're learning uh, it doesn't help to think this way but anyway so we have all these shapes but what a beginner might see is they might see this and they see it like go like this and then it goes like that 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 see this part they might view that as concave and there's a concave 
but it's not. It's two convexes. It's this, and then this, and then even here. It's this going down, and then this going that way, right? So it's always two convexes butting up against each other. It's not that way, and then in, and then out. That doesn't happen. Um, the only time it does happen is with bones. Like, yeah, there are convex points in bones, but as far as muscles are concerned, no, because they're on top, right? Like if you have a bone here, even if the bone was concave, like it's that shape, well, you'd have muscles on top. So it's going to become always convex. So going back here, that's what I'm trying to say is that this is convex, right? And even if it's not developed, it's going to be like this. It's going to be lower, but it's not going to be concave. So now, because we have this shape, let's translate it over. So what's going to happen, what I do is I don't draw the trapezius like this, right? Like I don't just fill in this like this and like this. What I do is I actually start in the back of the neck, see, because this is where it comes from. Start in the back of the neck. Now, I'm not drawing it um, on this, but I'm hovering over the back of the neck. And then I come around as if it's just this from behind. And then I start to put it in. And again, it connects at the clavicle. So this point is important because it's like, okay, well, that's in the middle of the deltoid. Um, and then you have the chest connecting to the clavicle, you have the trapezius coming around and down. So I'm going to do this back one and I'm just going to draw it as I'm thinking of it. I start like this, come around, come around like that. So that's how I'm thinking it, but I just draw it like that. So that's important. And then to understand the form of the trapezius, it's, it's very complicated. So um, you know, I can't go into everything and I'm not going to be able to cover everything. So I'm just going to try and cover the main points in this, but yeah, well, that's the trapezius. So that comes down next. So again, you're going to have to practice this in order to, to memorize it. Okay. So we've got deltoid, we've got the pecs. Now, you have the bicep coming down and again, this isn't an arm tutorial, but I just need to indicate where the biceps go because then you have another muscle, which is big and it comes from behind and that's the lats, the latiss latissimus dorsi. And that comes around from behind and you see it, not in all guys, but when it's developed, you do. And those are like the wing muscles, right? So if your arms, let's say this, rib. If your arms are stretched out, you get the deltoid going up. Trapezius is going to get bunched up. You get the neck. And then you have the lats and they connect up like that. And then you have uh, the pec muscles, right? So you get this going on with the, uh, the arm here. So you could sort of think of it almost like, like you have some drapery where this goes over and this comes under sort of like so, where it goes like this, goes over this and this goes that way, right? So that's, this is the lats. Now, it's really important to understand that the lats are behind because you want to make sure the arm is coming in front, right? So the pecs overlap the biceps, but then the biceps overlap the lats. And now here you have the ribs. So we get our ribs in, but then we've got our obliques here and the obliques fill in this space as we mentioned before. So 
for the most part, this is it. There's a few minor things that I haven't touched on, which I will just now. But for the most part, these are the major forms. Now you're going to have, of course, the abs. Um, and again, de depending on how developed uh, your figure that you're drawing is, uh, these will show more or less or not at all. Um, but basically you have the navel here, right? Above the navel, above the navel, you'll have two abs. So they actually have a pattern to them where at the navel, the line of the abs is sort of like this straight across, but then as it goes up, it sort of curves. So it's more like that. So you get like that kind of pattern. Um, I personally, I don't like the aesthetic of that, so I just ignore it. Um, it seems like you can get away with a lot with the abs. So anyway, so what you're going to have is you'll have the abs here. Another set of abs here. And then here you get one last set going down. Gives you your six pack. You also have a space in between the the pecs and the uh, the abs. So if these are getting developed, you can also see a bit of separation between these two. So it's almost like eight pack. Then if you have a strong definition here, it can be like a ten pack almost. But <laughs> yeah, that's pushing it. Anyway, so. Okay, so we have our abs now, and then we have the serratus muscles. Now, the serratus muscles are the superhero muscles, and what's really important to remember about these muscles is that they hug on the ribs. So these are rib muscles. Now, why is that important? Well, it's important because too often what will happen is people will draw these muscles and let's say they just forget maybe they haven't practiced anatomy or whatever so they've got their figure and that's his shape let's give him a nice face all right and they'll do the serratus muscles coming around like that and Anyway, so they have them coming all the way around from here, but they don't. Because, as I mentioned, they hug the ribs. So they actually just stay on the ribs. And the way I like to do the serratus muscles is, let me just highlight the rib cage. I'll use purple. So let's say this is the rib cage, right? Now, of course, the serratus are going to be on top of the rib cage, so it's it's going to be over this. It's not just going to go here and stop. It's actually going to go over that form. But we have the rib cage here, and then we're going to have see how it ends here, right? So because the serratus hug the ribs, this is where they stop. They're not going to keep going all the way down here. So what you can do, and what I like to do, is just sort of give some space here like a almost like a border right for here for where the muscles will go so I make my border and then I divide it into four so I'm gonna do that on a different page so it's more visible so let's zoom in again so here's the rib cage here's it going off in that direction and we have our lats and so here's the pec muscles so what I do is I create the border and then with the serratus I come around and I make four segments now there's not just four serratus muscles actually it goes all following the ribcage and even on the back you have the serratus muscles going all the way around so, but there's usually four um, 
not usually because it depends again on how developed you are, but four segments that are visible. And then they have this type of thing where they're almost like, I mean, this is why they're called serratus muscles. Sorry if I call it serratus, serratus, uh, either one, but serratus I think is how you should think of it because it's like a serrated edge, right? Like if you had a knife with a serrated edge, it would look like that, right? Like a saw. So you have that and then you have the obliques and the obliques are pretty big, but they connect, they interlock like that. So that's why you get this shape. It goes around and it looks like it comes down. So this right now, serratus, 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 obliques, obliques, obliques. All right, so let's go back to this. So the thing with the obliques though, is they're pretty big and they're sort of divided into two areas. So let me just highlight those two areas. You have this part that's, uh, that's interlocking with the serratus here. And then you also have this part and the obliques, they go all the way around. So it's going around here and you'd see, see on the back view, you'd have your obliques coming around like that. And for this part of the obliques, they tend to get more fat near the bottom. So you actually get uh, this kind of shape. And depending on how fat you are, this just grows, right? <laughs> Okay, so let's just do a couple more. And the point of this is to memorize it to the point that you don't actually need it. You don't want to be drawing with all these, you know, four segments and things. You just want to get it so you can sort of eyeball it. So start with the head. Now we know halfway is the eyes, split that nose, duplicate that distance, pit of the neck. It's going to be the nipples. This is going to be... the collarbone and the width is roughly two heads you don't have to be exact the arms are going to come down there's going to be a rib cage in here it's roughly going to go to about the uh, the navel and then half of this is going to be that that V shape for the pelvis and this is actually angled a bit down but yeah so you're gonna get that so there we go that's our basic structure so you know once you get fast at that you can just sort of eyeball things where it's like okay I know the next is gonna be about here it's gonna be arms coming down these are sort of slightly curved the collarbone so I just simplify it like that and then I can just often just simplify like get this V shape that forms and let's just put in the muscles and then we can see where that V shape comes from so if this is where the nipples is uh, are a little bit lower is going to be the pecs bring those up remember that we have the deltoid that comes down get a crease here other deltoid arms back get your lats coming around and they stop at the ribs there and you have your obliques okay so what are we missing missing trapezius get that in and then I mean if you want you can get in the serratus Just sketch in where those abs would go. Navel. And bring it down like that. So that's it. Eventually you get pretty fast. But see, here's that V. It's basically I'm just going from, let me do that again. Going from the ends of the collarbone. And I'm going down to this point. In between the crotch and it sort of gives you this V shape right so 
sometimes instead of seeing things in terms of just uh, the muscles themselves, you can start to see abstract shapes. You can see that V um, and you know, the deltoid, start to see that. So yeah, so here we can get that V shape. And then often the way I draw now is I'll get the head, get that V. Um, so here's where the crotch is going to be, get the pelvis, I mean, uh, sorry, the rib cage, and then between that, get the pelvis. There we go. And then I can build off there. Um, pecs, deltoid, trapezius, and neck. And this is just when I'm sketching quickly. And then get your your obliques. Now the obliques um, and the rib cage. There's so far we've just been uh, filling in this distance based on measurements. You can also think of it uh, as you can fit one fist in between the obliques and the the bottom of the ribs. So either way you want to think of it, whatever makes it easy for you. But yeah, get that. And then that's it. So let's do one where the arms are raised. So get the head in, rib cage, collarbones. Collarbones are going to go up because the arm. Or let's have this arm go up and this go just like across. So don't know what the pose is, but he's doing that. And okay, so drop the ribs, one arm in between, or one hand, one fist in between the ribs and the pelvis. And there we go. And maybe he's bending his his head looking up. So now what's going to happen is this is the uh, collarbone going up and the deltoid starts at the collarbone arm goes up deltoid is going here and when the arm is down this is important uh, when let's get a figure when the arm is down like that then make sure the deltoid like if this is a collarbone right make sure the deltoid is below this right you don't want to do this for the deltoid. Like I see this too often where people sort of, first of all, they make it too round. Second of all, it sort of goes over, but it doesn't because it can, it can be developed to the point that it obscures this collarbone, the end, but it's not going to go like way over it. And you have, it's the trapezius that is creating this bump, not the deltoid. Deltoid comes down like that right so yeah got to remember that so in this case we get the uh, neck and then trapezius coming down it's gonna bunch up because it's uh, you know it's been squeezed the deltoids pushing against it in this case we got it squeezed like so because it's, it's coming from behind the neck it's coming around it's getting squeezed in there Okay, so we have the deltoid here, and then remember how the pecs and the deltoid have that relationship. So what I do is tend to just do it like this, where this is almost just connected, because I know that's sort of how it connects, like from the, uh, from the front, we have the trapezius coming here, and we have the deltoid. And it connects to the collarbone, but then so does the pectoralis. So then you get this shape. So these can also be seen as just one shape. I mean, if you want, you can think of it that way. It's almost like, yeah, that's, that's just one thing. So, okay, now we'll have the underside. This is actually the trapezius now on this side probably, I mean, 
sorry, what am I saying? Triceps. Uh, this side, we'd see the bicep, but this side, because we're looking underneath, we'd actually be looking at the triceps. You have the pecs coming down. Here's the ribs still here. So you would have the lats coming from behind and the lats going like that and rib stopping and the obliques filling in that gap right and then you would get in this case um, remember that the ribs also expand right so they can be like when you breathe in the ribs are going to be bigger this is an exaggeration but they're going to be bigger than when they're you know at rest or not filled with air I mean the lungs aren't filled with air so ribs are going to expand but in a situation like this you really would see on a developed body anyway you would see the serratus quite a bit in a case like this so we could actually exaggerate that a bit just want to erase this a bit more because it's probably going to connect more like that ribs coming I mean the uh, pecs coming around and deltoid behind and this space you have like the pecs here and the lats here and then the arm coming in here and this space is the armpit and because you have skin sort of just gets filled in um, but anyway so we have that we have the serratus on this side and then get the uh, the ab muscles And one, two, three. Below the second ab muscles where the navel goes. And then you get these. And you have this V. And then the legs. So now, of course, that's what it's going to. Maybe like all the anatomy is there. But it's not going to be that extreme. Um, if you actually drew it, you wouldn't necessarily... I mean, if you're doing like comics, then maybe you'd include all that. But let's say you're not, then you could actually just tone it down quite a bit. And I'll just show. So you would definitely you'd see the outline. So we can keep the outline pretty much identical. And here we go. Uh, so then what would you see? Well, you would definitely probably see points here and here where the uh, collarbones are. You would see the neck. And I'm using fading lines. Like, uh, notice I didn't just do like a line straight down. Sort of let it fade off. So it doesn't necessarily connect to this point, but it suggests that there's a there's a muscle here, and you could use shading to your advantage here to to indicate where these things are. Now there's also going to be a gap in between those two pecs, so we can include that. And actually, uh, you tend to focus more on the definition here on this side of the pectoralis than on uh, this middle area. And it's similar to, to the breasts in women where you wouldn't get the cleavage unless, for instance, if the arms are pushed towards, towards each other, then yeah, even in a man, you're going to see um, some, some cleavage there where the uh, muscles are going to press up against each other. Um, but in this case, Probably not. See the collarbone a bit. You would definitely see an indent where the uh, 
deltoid and trapezius are, are touching, uh, you'd have this going up. And you would see this probably tucking under. And then usually things get get obscured in here. Like you don't clearly see all the connections with the lats, but you see more this muscle, um, like the bicep going in and connecting, but you also see this coming over. And so that's why this get, can get fuzzy. Uh, the way I like to think of it is just to remember that this comes around, then it sort of flattens out. And then you've got like a space, a hollow in here. So I think of this more like a flat plane and then this deltoid goes around like that. And then this is coming around like that. And this is also useful to do to, um, and this would actually be rounded because you've got the trape uh, triceps here. But yeah, this is also a good exercise is to sort of draw over the form like a wireframe. See if you can do that. See how that would go and then the pecs are pretty flat so you would flatten out around here but they've also got some thickness to them. But anyway this is sort of not what I was intending to do so let's just leave that for now and get back to this. So what would you see? Um, you'd probably see a bit of separation here where the uh, lats meet the the ribs and then maybe you'd see on this side a couple of serratus and I'm using like strokes like that it's called hatching to indicate the serratus because I don't want to make it like that where it's really defined you could do a thing where, which is to like do that but then sort of fade off And that's what happens a lot in comic books. They'll, they'll get like a defined line and then sort of use hatching to fade it off. But anyway, so you, you'll get that and just indicate some of the ribs. Definitely you could see the navel. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Get the nipples, which are two heads down. So somewhere around here. And, and this one would move up more. Yeah, so something like that. That's all you need to show. And then it depends on where the light's coming from, where you'd add shading. Maybe, you know, if the light's coming towards or from like this side, then of course this is all going to be in shadow. Um, a lot of this will be in shadow. And some would be in shadow here. So anyway, I think that covers most of the torso. I'm not going to go into the different body types just because I don't think... It's, I think it's too much for just one, uh, one video to go into all that. There's still so much more. I haven't covered uh, the torso from different angles. That too would probably require its own video because it's, it's pretty complicated. Um, from what you can see, you know, it's not simple. Uh, and that's why I recommend really practicing. You want to, you want to practice this stuff. You don't want to think that. If you can't do it, it's because you don't have talent or you don't, I don't know, you're just not able to and other people can. Because no, it's, it's really a case of don't just do this once. You're going to have to do this many times before you get it. Um, but once you get it, it starts to become easy. And then you can sort of just, you know, you sort of start seeing it in your head. You don't need to... Uh, draw all the guides just sort of get an idea of where these things connect had the connection of the uh, deltoid wasn't quite right and yeah I mean it's easy to forget little things so I mean if you make mistakes don't worry about it because I still make anatomy mistakes and I'm still studying all the time to learn you know where things go and how the body works so the important thing is don't get discouraged and and if you're watching this and with the intention of learning make sure you're doing not just one but but multiple 
uh, measurements and, and, and studies of, of this stuff because, yeah, you'll get it, but you got to put in the work. All right, hope that helped, and thanks for watching.